Our new username ladies man 217. Hello, Prime vs Prime back today with yet again another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the highly anticipated Transformers movie masterpiece series Barricade. Now as always we're going to take a brief look at the packaging as you can see masterpiece movie series We've got the Ford logo Toys R Us exclusive. It is a Takara Tomy and Hasbro collaboration Transformers MPM 5 Barricade on the side of the box We've got a very nice image of Barricade in his robot mode as well as the vehicle mode on the back of the box We've got officially licensed product robot mode pictures vehicle mode images movable faceplate and the rotor blade weapon on the other side of the box, we've just got a picture of Barricade in Vehicle Mode. On the top, Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series. And on the bottom, just legal information. Barricade comes with one accessory, that being this rotor blade weapon. It does include a stand, so you can display it when not in use, which I think is a really, really good addition from Takara Tomy and Hasbro to include, as it looked quite unsightly if you were to just lay it on the floor. As you can see, it's very accurate to the weapon that we see in the movie. It is a tripled spiked blade that is produced out of his wheels. These are faux wheels. These actually obviously don't become the wheels of the vehicle mode. However, it's still a very nice inclusion and it does spin much like it does in the movie. In order to plug it into the stand, you simply need to pick out one of the middle spikes, push it through the middle of the transparent plastic piece and then just tab it in to the bottom like so and it holds extremely well and is extremely stable when on display. Bringing Barricade into a, in for a closer look as you can see, this is a near on perfect representation of what Barricade's vehicle mode looked like for the first live action Transformers movie. We've got all those extremely nice details, the to punish and enslave emblem, 911 response, emergency responses, 643, which is obviously the number of this police car. We've got police with a very nice Decepticon emblem in the center, very nicely painted headlights, and overall just a really really well done vehicle mode the back has got the license plate as seen in the movie and we have got the 643 and Celine emblem stamped into or molded into the actual plastic the exhaust pipes are picked out in a silver paint and overall just an extremely well done vehicle mode representation of barricade from the first movie for a size comparison here is barricade next to the MPM bumblebee as you can see, they do scale perfectly with one another, with Barricade being a tad longer in terms of width and height than the Bumblebee Camaro. As you can see from the length of the vehicle on top, Barricade is just about an inch tall longer than Bumblebee, which is definitely accurate to what we see in the movie. Overalls, these make for a fantastic pairing in vehicle mode as well as robot Here mode. Here we have a size comparison between Barricade and the MPM Optimus Prime. Now, you're probably wondering why I have this tape over the grill of Optimus. It's due to preventing the paint scratching when in robot mode. But as you can see, I don't necessarily think the scale works too well here. I do think that um, it's more to do with Optimus Prime. I think that they should have made Optimus a lot bigger. He is a semi-truck and Barricade is just a silly muscle car. So really and truly Optimus should be a lot bigger. But it's not too obvious and it definitely does look nice for a display option. Now, one size comparison that I just had to do was between the Masterpiece Barricade and the Human Alliance version. Now, the Human Alliance Barricade has been my definitive representation of Barricade from the original Transformers movie in 2007 until this one come along. Now, not to knock this in any way, this is still a fantastic figure. However, this just improves so much that this lacked. Now, as you can see, the Human Alliance one is a tad larger than the Masterpiece one. So the Masterpiece version is definitely meant to scale with your Masterpiece figures rather than your other Human Alliance figures. As you can see, this one actually is missing quite a few details as well. We don't have the 643 logo on the side of the Human Alliance version. Turning the vehicle around, the paint applications are fairly similar. We do have the 643 logo on the Human Alliance one and the license plate are two different. I'm not particularly sure if that is accurate or not. They both have a molded in Celine emblem and on the side the only thing that's really missing is that 643 and the 911 emergency response. So overall the Masterpiece one wins in terms of accuracy for the vehicle mode. Overall this is a very nice representation of the vehicle mode that Barricade attained in the Transformers 2007 movie. It's extremely accurate, it improves on a lot of details that the previous Human Alliance version lacked and is overall just a very very nice 
vehicle mode. It scales perfectly with your Masterpiece Bumblebee, which is great, as these two do actually have a showdown in the 2007 Transformers movie. So scaling on that was definitely something that I was looking out for. Overall, just a very, very well done vehicle mode. Definitely, to me, gets a 9 out of 10. The only thing lacking would have been the inclusion of perhaps smoked out windows. I don't particularly like this transparent window as you can see the hands inside the vehicle mode. But other than that, a very nice representation of movie barricade. Now turning to transformation, this is fairly complex as a majority of the masterpiece figures are. What I tend to do is come to the top of the vehicle mode and pop open these side pieces here, just pull them out like so. That will then allow you to begin pulling apart the other aspects. Come back to the back of the vehicle and try and wedge these pieces out from the rear bumper section. You can see there's a tab there that you need to just try and unhook this whole section from. And with that done, you should free up the arm a considerable amount. Pop the door, the window section of the door up to allow you clearance to actually pull the arms outwards. It can be quite difficult, but after a while, it will tend to loosen up. Do the exact same thing on the other side. With that done, I then like to flip up this section here all the way to the top. And you can do this now if you want. I like to split the lights of the vehicle mode that are situated on the roof of the vehicle in half to give a more movie accurate look. Turning the figure around, we want to take this police section here and rotate it all the way around so that it's sitting flush on this section. Then we want to pop the wheel through. Now the wheels are actually on this hinge joint which allows you to slide it up and down. In order to fix it insecurely for robot mode, we want to slide up and then apply some force and it will tab in. Repeat the exact process for the other arm. We want to swivel this around so that it sits flush with this section here. So just, it can be quite difficult to get the motion working properly. But eventually you will do it and then pop the wheel section up, slide it upwards. Actually, I believe it's downwards and then tab in. Yep, it was downwards, you have to slide it down and then it will tab in properly. Take the hand sections and bring them out like so. Rotate them around so that the back of the hands is going to sit flush with the wheels. Now, if you can see these different molded in sections of the wheels, these tabs here, these this tab here and this tab will tab into those. So it's all about a matter of lining it up correctly. And there you have a secure connection. That's definitely the result that you want to end up with. Then pull this set turquoise blue section out and that will just sit flush with the arm filling in this section. Then bring this arm all the way up and there is a small hole section there that that tab will tab into fairly securely. And there you have one of the arms completely done. Coming up to the top of the arm, you want to untab that, hinge it forwards, and then it will actually break at another section and then just push that down. And that is a completed arm. Do the exact same process of that on the other arm and you're good to go. With both of the arms completed, we want to take this bumper section and pull it down like so. That will free up this whole piece here and allow us to rotate that forwards like that. Now you want to ideally get this piece in here threaded through this piece and that should lock all into place like so. I then like to push down the front piece of the hood and collapse it in. Just makes things a lot easier than doing it later. Pull the doors upwards so that you have some clearance. And then this tab here, my camera will focus. This tab here will peg into that hole there. So bring this section upwards like that and just hinge the whole piece back until it snaps into place like so. With that section now pegged into place, you want to bring the arms around and hinge them upwards so that you can get the arms looking as natural as possible. You then want to take the head section and pull it upwards 
like that. With that complete, you have near enough completed the upper torso section. Adjust these as you so choose. I tend to just collapse them down like that, just to give him the door effect that he had in the movie. Angle these pieces like so. They are adjustable, so you can do it to your desire. Unpeg the legs, and then you want to ratchet them upwards like that in order to give him a fairly squat appearance. Flip up these sections here to give him those pieces that he does have on his legs in the film. Bringing the figure around, we want to take these, rotate them like that, and then this slot here is what this section will completely slide into. Once that's complete, there is a tab section there that will just collapse this piece here and it will tab onto the leg like that. Repeat the same process on this side, collapse that in like so, and this tab will plug into this peg here just by pushing it down. And then the final step is to fold out the feet and flip out the little spikes. And there you have NPM barricade in his completed robot mode. Now this is definitely where that masterpiece quality shines through on this barricade figure. This is a near perfect representation of the robot mode that we saw from Transformers 2007. All the way throughout, he just looks phenomenal. He doesn't even look like he could transform into a vehicle at all, which is definitely something that a masterpiece figure should give you that impression of. All the way around, the kibble is reduced significantly. There's next to no backpack on this figure at all. And this is actually accurate to the movie if you go back and watch some of those scenes or if you just look at the CGI model from the film. He just looks fantastic. Bringing him in for a closer look, we can see that he has a very insectoid type head sculpt, which is definitely accurate to what we see in Transformers 1 as well as Dark of the Moon. We've got very nicely painted red eyes in there. I believe he does have approximately about four eyes. The chest section has been molded impeccably and the details are extremely sharp and present. The arms definitely do give us that look that we see in the film. Very messy, but still very lanky and accurate to the film. We can see that the torso section does have some very nice molded in detailing. The legs have got some of that same detail all the way throughout. Overall, just an amazingly accurate representation of how Barricade appeared in the movie. Now turning to articulation, I was actually extremely surprised by how much articulation this figure does actually have. So the head is on a ball joint allowing you to move it all the way around, but it's also on three separate hinge joints. There is a hinge joint there and a hinge joint at the bottom as well as the ball joint in the head. So you can actually position the head in a variety of different poses, which really does help when displaying and posing the figure. He does have a waist joint, however, it can be slightly limited by the back section, but it is still present. The arms are on ratchet joints going forwards and backwards, as well as out to the sides. There is elbow articulation, allowing you to move it up and down. You can also rotate in and out like so, and the thumb is on a hinge joint, but the other three fingers are all connected. I maybe would have liked to have seen individual articulation on the fingers, However, that's not something that is a massive drawback to the figure. The legs can kick forwards and backs on some very slight ratchet joints. There is ratchet moving them out like that. It does have a rotation at the thigh as well as a ratcheted knee. It does have ankle rockers hinging back and forth, ankle pivot. And unfortunately, there is no swivel joint. However, that's not necessarily integral to posing the figure. Another thing that I forgot to mention is he does actually have an articulated jaw and inside the jaw we do have some very nice sculpting and details. So they've just really gone all out with this figure and he definitely is probably one of the more centerpiece like figures that I now have in my collection. Now one feature I have to show off is the integration of this spiked weapon that we see him use in the first movie. Now in order to do this you essentially transform this arm back into how it would be if you were to take it into robot mode. You need to unpeg the section here and bring it down. You don't necessarily need to move this, although the instructions do tell you to do so. Pull down this piece and fold that piece upwards. You then want to untab the arm, the hand from the wheel section and rotate it around and bring it all the way back like that, just sitting it flush against that section. Unpeg the wheel, slide it up and tab it into place. 
And then now on this rotating piece here, we do have a slot section, a little tab there that will actually tab into this section here. Now, in order to do this, I've seen some people, some reviewers do this wrong, and that's why they're complaining that it is extremely loose. What you actually have to do is you see this tab section here, you need to manipulate it so that that is on the outside like so. So you push that in as well as keeping an eye on that tab section to just ensuring that it is on the outside like that. And that gives you a very secure connection joint. And I have so far not had this fall off once. You then want to bring the arm upwards and tab it in to its original place in order to give it a more natural look. And there you have the rotating blade weapon implemented on the figure. And I think it's been executed extremely well. It definitely does look like the weapon that we saw him use in the film. It does rotate and you can definitely get him into a plethora of poses with it. I've had no problem with loose joints nor the stability of the figure when holding the mace weapon. So that definitely does help for some display options. Overall, an extremely well integrated accessory. Now here we have MPM Barricade scaled next to the MPM Bumblebee. As you can see, Bumblebee is ever so slightly taller than Barricade, especially counting Bumblebee's wing doors. However, I think they scale fantastic. They definitely look accurate in terms of scale, especially when you watch some of those scenes from the first movie where these two have a fight sequence. They definitely do make for a very nice rivalry pair. Another comparison that I want to show is between MPM Barricade and the Human Alliance Barricade when in robot mode. Now, as you can see, the Human Alliance Barricade, much like in vehicle mode, is considerably larger than the Masterpiece version. However, this one is just so much more accurate than this version. For starters, this has a arm that can actually integrate the weapon as opposed to this one, which just had the spinning rotor blade as an actual hand. Now, as you can see, it's not necessarily integrated the best. It doesn't look as accurate to the movie. This one just looks so, so much better all the way around. You can just see a huge improvement from Hasbro and Takara Tomy in refining this mold and just creating something that looks astonishingly accurate to that 2007 movie. Overall, another fantastic addition to the movie masterpiece line. My only hope is that they continue this line. I do know we have Ironhide coming out very soon, but I hope to get Ratchet and just to get all the Autobots as well as some more Decepticons. This barricade figure has definitely shown me what Hasbro and Takara Tomy can do when working together as this figure is fantastic and I have no doubts whatsoever that this will definitely make my top 10 toys of 2018. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. Please be sure to like, comment and subscribe and until next time, I'll see you in my next review. Thanks for watching.